Today we will talk about the standardized infection ratio, one of the major uh, metric used for uh, HAI presentation. So before we talk about uh, standardized infection ratio, we have to know uh, something about the word standardization. Uh, and there is a standardized infection ratio and newly uh, created a standardized utilization ratio. It is the same concept, but just used for utilization rather than infection. And we'll give you an example for SIR uh, for different types of infection and uh, uh, some comments about uh, SIR. For the word standardization refers to methods of adjustment based on weighted average. Uh, so a standardization is one of the adjustment method. There is several adjustment methods. They are not mentioned here in this uh, uh, lecture, but they are used in statistics like uh, stratification, exclusion, uh, uh, standardization, uh, logistic regression, and other types of multivariate uh, regression. Uh, so standardization uh, is based on something called weighted average. So the uh, weighted average means you give higher weight to more important items and lower weight for less important items. So make it uh, uh, like a standardized. So there is two types of standardization, one called direct standardization and indirect standardization. So what we use in SIR actually is indirect standardization, not the direct one. But let's understand what does it mean direct and indirect. Direct means you need to have a specific rates of a study population. And basically, we, we don't have this in infection control. Usually we have a benchmark and we're looking for to create the specific rate of our study population. So it is opposite of what we have. So let's go to the one that is we are using. So we here, we need a, a benchmark, which is a standardized population, sorry, a standard population. Uh, and it is commonly used way of standardization. And the example of this is standardized mortality ratio, where you can standardize the death rate among a different group based on uh, one, one or more risk factors that uh, affect the death rate. And for example, uh, everybody is going to die, but the death rate at children would be much less than death rate uh, in very old uh, age. So to do indirect standardization, you need to have a standard population with different age groups and death rate for each age group. And then you standardize your study population or your hospital patients to that standard population based on the distribution of age groups in this uh, uh, in this uh, study population or hospital population, hospital patients. So if we go to standardized infection ratio or utilization ratio, um, it is the same concept. You have observed events over expected events. Uh, so the standardized infection ratio, SIR, is a summary measure used to track HAI uh, at the level of hospital, at the level of nation, and internationally. Uh, and when you look at the level of hospital, it is done over time. So you can uh, compare yourself in 2022 to 2019 to 2015 and so on. So at the hospital level, usually we look uh, at a trend over time, uh, but we also can standardize uh, on a national wise as well as internationally. Uh, SIR provides improved risk adjustment and replace risk stratified rates. So if you remember all the methodology that we used about CLEPSI, CAUTI, VAB, dialysis events, SSI, we were saying it yield risk adjusted rates and risk adjusted rates mainly were risk stratified rates, rates according to the type of ICU rates, according to the type of surgery and so on. So here we have a single number, single summary number 
that adjust that replace this stratified rates into one single number. How it is calculated, you divide observed over expected uh, HII events. Uh, a standardized utilization ratio is basically the same as a standardized infection ratio, but the, the, rather than having uh, observed events or observed, yani observed collapse events, or observed county events, or observed VAB events, you ob uh, observe it denominator device days over expected device days. So uh, if you uh, standardize infection ratio, the numerator and denominator is HAI events, CLEPSI, CAUTI, VAB, dialysis events, SSI, and so on. But for utilization ratio, the numerator and the denominator is device days, is device days. So here you understand the, your utilization summary measure for your utilization, for your utilization compared to the standard population utilization. And remember that the standardized infection ratio is relatively uh, a recent uh, uh, way of looking at, SS, uh, at, at uh, uh, surveillance data, and it was introduced at the end of December, uh, at the end of 2010. So the first start was 2011 and 12 uh, for a standardized infection ratio. It was used at the beginning for SSI and later uh, for other types of infection, including CLEPSI, VAP, CAUTI, and so on. What is the advantage of SIR? It's a single summary measure. As, I, as we said, we were giving the administration, for example, the CLEPSI rate for adult ICU, for pediatric ICU, for neonatal ICU, for different types of pediatric, different types of adults. So the administration sometimes asks for, do you have a summary measure for all of this? So this is the summary measure, SIR. So SIR represents the summary measure over all types of data collected from different types of ICU or different types of surgeries and so on. Risk adjusted. It adjusts for the factor known to be associated with the difference in HIA rates, HAI rates. How is that? As we said, instead of uh, stratifying our rates by the type of ICU, by the weight of the neonates, uh, by the type of uh, catheter in, in, in uh, oncology units, either temporary or permanent, uh, by the a type of surgery by the risk index of the surgery and so on you can you can adjust for all of this in one summary measure so it's a risk adjusted it replaced the stratification with a summary measure adjusted also so it's a type of adjustment that avoid the stratification it's scalable can be calculated uh, as we said at hospital level at national level at uh, regional level like GCC and as with international level as uh, uh, comparing SIR uh, between different countries. And currently the most widely used uh, uh, SIR data is US data and it compare different states in United States and different hospitals across the USA uh, 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 over a baseline data and see if the hospital or the state are doing better or worse compared to the baseline. So it is scalable. You can do it uh, at different uh, scales, uh, means you can do it over uh, hospital wide, um, for a state wide, for country wide, and internationally. Easy understood, and this is the, the main drive for SIR. You, uh, instead of explaining to the people what does it mean to CLAPSI per 1000 central line uh, days, uh, you give them one uh, percentage saying we are doing much better than uh, this benchmark or we actually doing similar or worse than this benchmark. So it's easy understood by non-infection control by, uh, employee or uh, administration or colleagues. Uh, the SIR uh, calculated by NHSN use 2002-6, uh, 2008 as baseline, and later on they use another baseline uh, 9, and right now they are using 19. So the baseline can be changed. 
uh, uh, means that uh, if you have, for example, a five-year plan to reduce collapse, you can use the rate before this five-year as your baseline, and across the five year, you still use the same baseline. And after end of this five years, you can use the five year uh, average uh, as your baseline for the next five year plan you are, want, you are working. So basically the baseline that you use can be moving baseline, but during the same period that you specify like five year uh, collapse prevention plan or something like that, you should use the same uh, baseline during that period, but you can change it when you have another period. Uh, at the same time, you in, in Saudi Arabia, you can use a benchmark as 2006 8 uh, for, for US or 2009 US or 2019 US. So uh, basically, uh, since it's another country, you can use whatever uh, you think it is better for your uh, situation. As baseline but again if you use a baseline you have to use the same baseline for the duration that you want to compare uh, to compare it to the baseline so the whole duration uh, to allow for more precise comparison SIR are calculated only if the number of expected HI is more than one one or more sorry so this means what this means we cannot make SIR for very small units that have three four bids and to collect the data about CLEPSI, you need at least a year to collect the CLEPSI. So if your unit has expected number of CLEPSI less than one, probably this unit is not sufficient uh, to do the SIR. But usually we don't have problem with this uh, reservation because uh, we usually make uh, multiple units at the same time and the expected number uh, is usually they choose bigger units to make uh, surveillance. And if you have a smaller unit, the way you can deal with this smaller number, you can uh, choose longer duration. So instead of doing like one month in a 20 bid uh, unit, you can do six months in uh, four or five bid unit uh, to give to get a good expected number, more than one, one or more. Uh, uh, I should say, uh, then we, we can use it. But for a small unit, short duration, uh, the data is not reliable enough to use for uh, SIR calculation. Uh, when the expected HI less than ten, uh, less than one, this indicates that the, the, the unit is too small to uh, like uh, make reliable data to compare. So what is the interpretation? The interpretation, once you calculate the SIR, you get a number. This number, consider one as a 100%, yani one equal in, in meaning to 100%. Uh, but if we use the, the one uh, criteria, uh, if SIR equal to one means that your HAI rate you are comparing is actually similar in your patients similar to the uh, benchmark, but if the SIR is more than one, it means that you have higher rate of HAI than the benchmark after adjustment of the factors in concern. Uh, lower than one means that you have HIA rate uh, uh, less than the rate of the benchmark after adjusting for the uh, factors in concern. Factors in concern here could be the types of ICU, the weight of the baby uh, in neonatal ICU only, uh, the type of catheter in the specialty care area only, uh, or the type uh, of uh, different surgeries uh, or procedures in SSI SIR. CLEPSI SIR. This is a uh, hypothetical example for CLEPSI SIR calculation, so we'll give you here rate uh, of surveillance data or surveil uh, surveillance data from four different uh, adult ICUs like medical ICU, uh, medical cardiac ICU, medical surgical ICU, and neurosurgical ICU. In each ICU, you run a surveillance and you get uh, CLAPSI events collected or detected, identified during the surveillance period and the central line days 
uh, again denominator collected during the surveillance period and you just type this as usual uh, so if you record the for example medical cardiac icu after doing the surveillance here they didn't mention how long is the surveillance assume that this surveillance for three months they detected two clapsy events uh, and the, the denominator was 380 uh, central line days and so on uh, so you record these numbers and then uh, you get the hospital rate for each uh, uh, ICU by dividing the number of events over the central line days and times this in 1000 and if you divide 2 by 380 uh, and times this in 1000 you get 5.26 so this is the rate for CLEPSI in medical cardiac ICU and similarly the rate of CLEPSI in medical ICU is 3.89 Without calculating SIR, you can go to the administration, report to these numbers as the CLAPSI rate in different ICUs. So you can say the CLAPSI rate was 5.26 in medical cardiac ICU, it was 4.78 in medical surgical ICU, it was 2.81 in neurosurgical ICU, and so on. And if you consider all ICUs together, it was 4.05. Okay, we, we don't recommend this uh, uh, overall rate. Usually when you have different types of ICU, you should give the rate for each ICU individually, not the overall rate. So what's next? What next is we, 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 uh, we need to uh, find the benchmark rate. And we, as we said, we use indirect standardization, which needs individual rate uh, of the benchmark so we're looking for the similar ICU to our ICU uh, in the published data from the NHSN and here we have medical medical cardiac medical surgical and neurosurgical it is the same types of ICU that we collected and we get the number it uh, for example it is uh, the benchmark here the bold mean bold mean means the average of the medical uh, ICU, it was 0.3. For the medical cardiac ICU, it was 1.1. For the medical surgical, it was 1.2, and so on. So we take this average number as the benchmark rate. We add it in the NHSN rates. So we add a new column here. Then the new column represent the NHSN rates uh, that is published in NHSN rate. Um, if you see that this number is a little different from uh, the previous slide is because we we use the different year the, the the example was in a different year but these these numbers 2 2.6 1.5 2.5 you should get it from the benchmark right away this is you shouldn't calculate this is already published in the benchmark so you take it so now the last step we want to calculate the expected collapse so how we calculate the expected collapse we have a, a formula the expected collapse uh, can be calculated by uh, timing uh, by multiplying the central line days in your unit with the NHSN rate that you uh, uh, abstracted from uh, the report or benchmark report uh, for that unit so assuming that the benchmark NHSN rate for the medical cardiac is 2 per 1,000 central line days, so the U times this 2 uh, times 380 central line days and divided by 1,000. Since you, when the rate was calculated, we times 1,000. Here we divide by 10,000 to get the same number. So you get 0.76. So if you are in a cardiac, medical cardiac ICU, and you have 380 central line days and you have a rate similar to the NHSN which is 2 per 1000 central line days you expect to get during the surveillance 0.76 uh, uh, event so you may ask me uh, we don't have part of event either we have collapse or no collapse so one or zero fine but i'm just giving you hypothetical example if you have 380 uh, central line days you wouldn't expect more than 0.76 uh, event so if you get one event you have higher rate if you give zero event you have lower rate okay 
uh, and you do the same for medical, medical surgical, and neurosurgical, and you get uh, the numbers as you see: 0.67 for medical, 0.94 for medical surgical, and 1.78 for neurosurgical. So how 1.78 was calculated? It was calculated by uh, multiplying 2.5, the NHSN rate, by uh, the central line day 712 uh, uh, days and divide this by 1000 you get 1.78 which is the expected number of events if you have the same rate as NHSN. Now going to the expected uh, rate for different types of ICU we have, we have here four types of ICU you can sum them up so 0.76 plus 0.67 plus uh, 9.4 plus 1.78 it will give you 415. So if you have this four unit under surveillance and you have a rate similar to the NHSN rate, based on the number of central line days in these units, you expect to get during the surveillance 4.15 events of collapse. If you want to get the SIR, you uh, divide observed versus expected. The observed number is the number of collapses that you detected during the surveillance. And as you see, it was two uh, in medical cardiac, one in medical, three in medical surgical, two in neurosurgical. So the total was eight. Uh, total of the four ICU was eight uh, uh, events. And we expecting, if we have the same NHSN rate, we have 4.15. So we divide 8 by 4.15, which will give you 1.93. So what does it mean 1.93? We will know in the next slide. So uh, this rate give you, uh, this graph give you graphically what we said. We have four units, each unit has a rate. Each rate was calculated by dividing the number of events uh, over the number of central line days times 1000. So you can present this to the administration like this. Or additionally, you can add a benchmark for each unit, which is the red color. Assume that this is the NHSN rate uh, and you get this rate beside. So now you know that your hospital is blue color, the benchmark is the red color, and obviously. Uh, most of the units have very high, very high or higher rate than NHSN. But the higher rate in NHSN was very high, very big difference in medical cardiac, but very little difference in neurosurgical. So what is the overall difference? This is how SIR is giving you. So the SIR uh, that you calculated in your hospital, it is 1.93 compared to the NHSN rate. And when we say convert to NHSN rate, so the NHSN rate is one. So usually the reference in the statistics, when you compare using uh, SIR, odds ratio, uh, hazard ratio, um, you, you, your reference is one. So one is the reference. Means if you assume that NHSN 100%, so how much you rate? My rate is 193%. So my rate is 93 higher than the 100 of the uh, NHSN. So back to our results. Uh, if your hospital has eight collapse events and has this central line days and predicted collapse events, which is the expected collapse events is 415, as we giving you in the, in the previous example, so you divide uh, 415 by 8, you get 1.93, or sorry, uh, observed 8 over uh, expected 415, you, give, you get 193, which means 93 higher than NHSN. Uh, there is additionally, you cannot calculate this, but uh, some statistical program and formula can calculate also for you the B value and confidence interval for the SIR. So what does it mean 93? It means that your hospital is rate for CLEPSI in four units is basically 93 higher than uh, the benchmark here. The benchmark was NHSN, okay? Uh, what is the value of having B value or uh, 95 uh, confidence interval? Uh, for the B value, it will answer the question, is this higher rate? is significant should we consider it something serious 
uh, so the amount of difference is you get by uh, looking at SIR. We said one is equal, above one is higher, blue one is lower. So what is above one is the 93. So our hospital is 93 above uh, the NHSN. So the next question, is this significant, statistically significant? If the B value is than 5%, we would say it's significant. But here the B value is 0 0.06, so it's not significant. You're, yes, our hospital is 93% higher than the NHSN, but the result is not significant, which means we cannot rely on it right now unless we collect more data. And if we collect more data, and the B value become less than 0.05, we'll consider this significant. But if we collect more data and it is still non-significant, so you consider this increase is, is not significant. Uh, just to, to make it uh, like easier to understand, uh, if somebody had a salary of 10,000 and another person had a salary of 12,000, so one of them have 2,000 higher uh, salary than the other. The question is, is this significant? You can, mathematically, it is higher, 2,000. No way you can say 12 is not higher by 2,000 more than 10,000. Uh, but is this significant? You can say this is not significant given the experience of this uh, employee. It's not ex uh, uh, it, it is significant given they have both the same experience and the same age. For example, you can say significance is something different from the absolute difference. So here, the absolute difference, you get 93 from the SIR, but is this result statistically significant or not is by B value. For the confidence interval, it's not our interest here, but it means that a similar hospital uh, to our hospital would be between 83 and 380 higher than NHSN. So this is the true uh, difference between our hospital to compare to the benchmark. So we get one number in SIR, but in the confidence interval, you get two numbers, one blue our number and one higher than our number. Our number was 93, the blue number is 83, and the higher number is 380. Again, you should not focus on this. So focus only on what is the meaning of SIR and if additional information like B value available, take, take it uh, in consideration when you describe your data. Another example about SSI SIR. So assume that this is two hospitals, one in Jeddah and one in Riyadh, and both hospitals are doing the same uh, surgery uh, surveillance. A number of surgeries in both hospitals are the same. It is 1,154. Uh, uh, and the number of SSI in both is 30. So the two hospitals have 30 SSI. And the rate should be the similar in both hospitals because you divide 30 by 1,154 and you get 2.6%. So using the crude data, this is called crude data. It's not adjusted yet. What does it mean crude? It's not adjusted. What does it mean adjusted? It's adjusted to the risk uh, uh, risk index category. So for this data is is a crude data. Uh, it would anybody who will read this data would say Jeddah Hospital compared to Riyadh Hospital have equal rate of SSI, which is 2.6 percent. Now we have something called risk index category. And uh, and uh, for that surgery, which is cabbage, basically, uh, we look for the risk index category uh, in uh, NHSN, and we see that zero have very low rate, three point three five, less than one, and uh, risk index category, which means they have one risk uh, uh, risk factor, it is two point five five, and if they have two risk factors. Uh, uh, it is 4.28 um, and the overall is 2.48 so uh, for, for uh, 2.494 uh, uh, so comparing our rate 2.6 to 2.94 our rate is slightly lower 
this is clear from the absolute number for the two hospitals but so our rate in the two hospitals 2.6 uh, and the rate is 2.94 and in HSN uh, uh, this is the called the crude rate what if we want to make uh, indirect standardization and get the SSI SIR it will uh, uh, adjust both rates in the two hospital uh, based on the risk index category so how we do that we uh, we put the number we 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 have three types of risk index category zero one two so you have to have three lines which is the yellow lines and each hospital you record the number of surgery this is our uh, denominator here so in the risk index category zero you have three surgery in this risk index category zero in jeddah but 500 in riyadh uh, in, in in one you have 950 in jeddah 500 in riyadh so it's uh, riyadh less compared to uh, uh, the uh, risk index zero riyadh was higher Risk index 2, we have 201 uh, in, in Jeddah uh, and much less in, uh, in, in Riyadh, 154. So there is clear difference in the, in the risk index of different surgeries done in Jeddah and Riyadh. Uh, remember that the number of surgery in both hospitals are equal. It is 1154, uh, as you see, and the number of SSI is the same and the rate, crude rate is the same. But there is a major difference here that the risk index was much higher in uh, Jeddah, which has um, higher of one and two compared to Riyadh, which has higher of the zero. So what is the expected uh, SSI in each category for each hospital? For the category zero in NHSN, how you get this zero or how you get to 24.6? Let's stick to 24.6, how we get this number. You get this number by timing the number of surgery, which is 950, by the expected rate, if we have rate similar to cabbage NHSN rate for that index risk index category one, it was 2.55 so if you times 950 in 2.55 and divide by 100 you get 24.2 you do this for each category of the three categories 0 1 2 for each hospital Jeddah and Riyadh and you get this expected SSI now you sum up the SSI for the three categories in Jeddah 0 24.2 8.6 it give you 32.8 for Riyadh, 1.8, 12.8, 6.6, and you sum up the bit, become 21.1. So for the SIR, we need to create two SIR, one for Jeddah compared to NHSN standard, and Riyadh compared to NHSN standard. So for the SIR for Jeddah, it would be the observed over expected, so 30 over 32.8 it is 91 percent and for Riyadh it is 30 over 21.1 so it is 142 percent or 1.42 so basically if we compare both hospitals to the benchmark Jeddah looks like it's 99 percent less because the rate was 90 percent compared to the uh, NHSN this is less than one 0.91 is less than one so it means it is less than NHSN how much less you uh, uh, subtract 0.91 from one so 0.91 minus one uh, it will give you minus uh, 0 0.09 so which is nine percent less and if you uh, higher uh, then 1.42 minus 1 it give you 42 but plus it's more uh, so here we can say the Jeddah is is if even less than uh, NHSN but Riyadh is more more clearly higher than NHSN and remember that the crude rate for 
each hospital was 2.6 and they were exactly similar with similar SSI number and denominator which, which is the number of surgery but when we adjust for the risk index category one hospital becomes even less than NHSN and one hospital become higher than NHSN and now it is clear uh, so why why this result because Riyadh had much higher number of surgeries in the stage zero in the risk index zero and this means patient without other risk factors so this patient shouldn't get infection if they get infection this means uh, like a limitation in, 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 in Riyadh they, they should work on it so when uh, compared to the NHSN Jeddah were less than the NHSN which is 100 and Jeddah uh, Jeddah less by 9%, which is 100 minus 91, and uh, Riyadh was higher by 42%, which 142% minus 100, and now clear that uh, Jeddah were doing better than Riyadh, while on the left side, the crude rate, Jeddah and Riyadh were the same. So uh, crude rate can be misleading, SIR is very important metric to adjust for the difference between two hospitals or the difference between the hospital and the benchmark. MOH, CLAB, CSIR, this is another example of SIR and SUR, is standardized utilization ratio uh, from the publication of MOH. This publication about uh, published by the MOH, burden of central line associated bloodstream infection in one 06, uh, 106 uh, Ministry of Health Hospitals in Saudi Arabia, a two-year surveillance study. So here you have uh, NHSN rate uh, and uh, INIC rate, uh, uh, YGCC rate. So they use in this paper three types of uh, benchmark, NHSN, INIC, which is developing countries and GCC from the GCC countries. Let's take the NHSN. So uh, the standardized infection ratio uh, was for CLEPSI 3.223, which means they are 2.2 higher than uh, uh, times, 2.2 times higher than NHSN, or 223% higher than NHSN. But 2.2 times is more logic than 223 higher percent. Uh, for the utilization, it's 0.85, which means the utilization of central line in, uh, in MOH hospital was 15% less than NHSN rate. So how come they get these numbers? Um, this slide will show you how they get this number, what they did. They uh, calculated the rate of uh, CLEPSI for each unit. You have burn, medical, medical cardiac, and so on until trauma. And for each one, they have the patient days, central line days, and events. They divide the events by central line days. And times this 1,000, they get the rate and they get the duration, the, sorry, the uh, utilization, device utilization ratio, which is here central line utilization ratio by dividing the central line days over the patient days. And get so if you divide 2,000, in the burn unit, if you divide 2,047 central line days by 15,945 days, patient days, you get 0.1313% uh, uh, utilization. And as you see, the utilization is different from one unit to unit. And then you look for NHSN, CLAPC rate, and utilization rate uh, uh, comparison in comparison to the same unit. So for the burn, NHSN rate was 2.92 and utilization 47 and so on. You, you, every, every uh, one, uh, every uh, number of this uh, on the, uh, in the orange side, the blue side, um, they are just enumerating the number either from the NHSN or from our data. Here, here how we get the observed and the expected. The observed is the events that were described during the surveillance and it is exactly similar to the events on the on the uh, green part on the right side you will see that eight observed is exactly the eight detected during the surveillance in Vern. 148 is the 148 detected in medical ICU and so on so how you get the expected you get the expected by the central line days in MOH the violet color 2047 
and times the rate in NHSN, which is 2.92, and you get by uh, you get six expected collapse, and so on. You you repeat the same thing for medical, medical cardiac, medical surgical, and so on until you finish the all types of uh, of units. Now you sum up all the observed from the different units, it becomes 1542, and the expected it is 4, 477. And you, if you divide observed over expected, uh, you, you get uh, SIR of 3.2, which means you are 2.2 times higher than NHSN, or you are 220 uh, higher uh, percent higher than uh, NHSN. If you repeat the same thing with uh, uh, utilization ratio, how you get the utilization? You uh, you uh, uh, multiply in much patient days, which is the violet color here on the most left uh, bar. In the burns, it's 15,945. 15, you times this with the NHSN device utilization ratio, which is 0.47. So if you time this with 0.47, you get 4,464 expected uh, central line days. So the observed central line days uh, is exactly the central line days that you detected during surveillance. So in burn units, it's one, 2047. So the observed 2047, the expected by calculation is 7,464. You sum up all the observed, you sum up all the expected, and you divide observed for, for expected, you get 0.85. So basically, they have higher rate of collapse, but lower rate of utilization which means that the infection control measures are not working enough similar to the NHSN because if you have less utilization you expect to have less rate but if when you have 15 percent less utilization but 2.2 times higher rate uh, this is uh, not good so if you want to do multi-adjusted SSI SIR rate uh, you need more sophisticated techniques and this is a paper uh, that's, that was published before uh, about uh, uh, the, the paper idea is, uh, is asking, is risk index a category that was calculated as usual based on the SA score, the wound class, and the time of the surgery? It is three items. So patient can get one, two, three items or zero. So uh, it is four groups, zero, one, two, three. Is this enough or we have other risk factors uh, that affect the SSI rate? Obviously, we have other risk factors uh, and this is does not much intelligence uh, to have to detect. Uh, obviously, uh, the rate of infection in SSI is different by the presence of diabetes, presence of other comorbidity, by type of uh, hospital, by the type of surgery and so on. So it's not only this risk index category that affected the rate, but it used to be the most important one. That's why, that, that's why it were including in the NHSN risk index category. But right now, when they repeated this using multivariate analysis for each surgery, they found different items that's considered risk, risk factors for developing SSI. So, uh, for improving the risk adjustment, uh, they no longer based on risk index uh, uh, category, the basic one that we just said, the, they used new method uh, to improve the risk adjustment calculation through logistic regression modeling used for prediction of probability of occurrence of an event by fitted data. Of course, uh, for most of the people in infection control, they are not able to run this uh, sophisticated multivariate logistic regression models and you cannot create, uh, you, ca you cannot reach this, um, the improved risk index, uh, risk adjustment based on multiple factors, several multiple factors, maybe 20, 30 other factors uh, more than the basic risk index category. You cannot do that unless you have the same data with this uh, risk uh, factor data collected for each patient 
and you have to do the adjustment within the data. So we cannot make this adjustment based on published in its in HSN data. We have to have the data itself and our data merge it in their data and then calculate this. So how can we uh, replicate this in, in Saudi Arabia? We need our own data for all, all our patients who run surgery and uh, were included in SSI surveillance and include in all of them the risk factors, including comorbidity, type of hospital, was teaching a hospital, not teaching a hospital, number of beds, uh, presence of diabetes, presence of other comorbidity, um, presence of uh, laparoscope, use of a laparoscope, uh, urgent or non-urgent surgery, and so on. You include all this information in the data, then you can do this improved risk adjustment. Uh, uh, till now, th there is no data doing this. Maybe in the future, I will be able to do it. And when they do that, uh, they figured out that there's multiple uh, factors, as you see here, age, gender, emergency, trauma, general anesthesia, ASA score, wound class duration, medical school affiliation, uh, teaching school or not, number of hospital beds, endoscope, outpatient, so on. For each surgery, it is different from one to one. Again, this is American data, NHSN data. If you replicate this in Saudi Arabia, you can go, you could you, you can get different set of risk factors for different types of surgery. But this is this is the data that was published based on the uh, NHSN data. So we just share their data, not uh, meaning that these are the only risk factors associated with these types of surgery. Uh, and now they they list the variable that can affect the SSI rate based on the type of surgery. So if you have a appendectomy, make sure that emergency uh, status in the scope views, gender, male or female, ASA score, one class are collected because these are the factors that affect appendectomy, SSI development, and so on. Uh, how they reach this information by getting the beta for uh, beta or estimate from multivariate logistic regression and the confidence interval for beta and uh, out of this they can calculate the probability of getting uh, uh, SSI in your population who share the same information uh, or collected the same information about emergency, gender, bit size, one the class and so on. So your you can compare your patient, even if they have different values for emergency, gender, bit size, and one the class, they can compare to the benchmark uh, after adjusting to these variables and get you the probable number of our expected number of CLAPSI. This would you, you would use in uh, SIR that adjusts for all these variables together, not only the risk index category as we described in the previous example. These are the details, as I said, each, uh, uh, each risk factor is included and they can calculate, but this is, as you see, as you see, it needs multivariate logistic regression analysis. So thank you very much for listening to this important lecture about SIR and remember that uh, NHSN is now promoting SIR in all their reports. So they compare each state to the national standard uh, and uh, they can by uh, by using this uh, data they can uh, monitor the progress of improvement or uh, disimprovement uh, uh, or worsening of the their data state by state uh, uh, for, for example if there is uh, 50 states uh, included in CLAPSI reduction rate they can know the progress of their program based on SIR for different years compared to the baseline before starting this uh, uh, CLAPSI reduction uh, program. Thank you very much.